Well, once again, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I'm eager to get through this game now because um, there has just recently been a re-release for Sherlock Holmes The Awakened, which is not the next game in the series I'm going to play because I'm going to play them in chronological order. So the uh, next one is actually Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper, but I believe that The Awakened is the third in the series, and I want to get to that one, so... Now, where was I? He had some side quests. Um, and we had just gotten another invitation. Vogel creeps me out. There's something with Vogel. Like, I can't put my finger on it exactly. There's something not right with that guy. He's... There's more than meets the eye with Mr. Vogel here. Um... So we can push forward with that. Um, we do have a lead here with Otto Richter for a mother's love. I don't see an icon above it, but we do know that there was a legal trial. I can't recall if it was a civil suit for medical malpractice or a criminal suit. There may be something to look up there at the police station. Let's, um... Mycroft wants me to find a book by F.D. It has a red cover. Jim has challenged me with this task. Um, is that in the house? One of our undercover agents disappeared a couple of days ago. Your task was to find out what happened to him and, if possible, retrieve the sensitive item he was carrying. I think this one we got a while ago. Missing agent was last seen leaving his bookshop, which is located in northern Old City at the eastern end of Sato Street. Angelo Danolo, a short man of Italian origin, had a stack of books with him and wore a green hat. Tattoo seven stars on his right forearm. Sensitive item, a book by F.D. It has a red cover. Well, that's the one that he's asked me to find, so it seems like I'm going to have to find it. Let's see if we can knock this one out quickly. Old City. Seto Street. Northern Old City. Seto Street. It's a eastern. Eastern. So, hereabouts. And there's a fast travel point conveniently nearby. This looks... okay. This way, and then around the corner. See a sign for a bookshop. Stop that one. Stop that one. Stop this one. This one, I am on Seto Street now. Yeah? I am. Okay. It's not this one. A sign would be appreciated. No. There's not even a handle on this one. Uh, no. Okay. What the hell? There's a fucking axe sticking out of this wardrobe. Covered. Um. Oh, I'm on the wrong end. Eastern end. God. Fucking stupid. Here we go. Where are books and prints? Seems to be locked. Hmm, a bit dusty. Hasn't been touched for a couple of days. And a letter here on the ground. Angelo. Talk to my boys over at the smithy, and it's good news. Drop by with your favorite pair, and I will work my magic on them. They will be as good as new in no time. I also had a chat with a physician, and he confirmed my suspicions. Your back problems may be connected to the broken metal inlay in your souls. I recommend you cease to wear them until they have been repaired. Ismail. Okay, so he wears shoes with knobs or clothes. 
Which means we should be able to... I'm going to need to do this. You did wear your favorite boots. Such devotion. There he goes. Shoes back in these days often had hobnails in them. Um, Angelo's footprints end here abruptly. Not a good sign. Damn blood. What is, this? is that a bookmark? Colorful piece of fabric as a bookmark. An elegant decision. Oh. And a truncheon. This must have left a grievous wound. God, it's, it's split. That's how hard they hit him. I can't examine the blood. Someone had to stand here for a couple of hours at least. Mm, you're basing that just on the cigarettes that are here? I don't know. Eleven cigarette ends of the same brand. Somebody spent some considerable time here. A hasty job by an amateur, but Angelo was taken by surprise nevertheless. Is that... Oh, okay. I was going to say, where is this coming from? Okay. Gonna now follow the blood trail. There's no drag marks, so he must have had help carrying him. I like how Angelo has the little hat. And what became of the books he was carrying? There's a bookmark left over. So it goes anywhere either. So this must be what they were after if they bothered to gather the books up. Okay. Um, ask around, it says here. In that, seems a man was waiting for Angelo in the yard for a long time smoking cigarettes. Once Angelo entered the yard, the man knocked him out with a club. The attack happened quickly. Probably going to need to change for this, I'm assuming, but let's ask anyway. May I ask you something? You shouldn't have left your mansion. You won't get any answers from me. Right, exactly. Excuse me while I change my clothes in front of you, and I'll ask you again directly. Uh, we're in old town, so I'm going to guess we have to do the whole dressing like this thing. I'm leaving the tattoo. May on. I ask for your assistance? Brother, you're fortunate I know something yeah, about Yeah, see, this. now that I've changed my clothes. One of the local residents saw two men in the yard a few nights ago. One man had to support the other since he was barely standing, probably drunk. He went down, down the stairs to Castle Road in Old City. Once there, he put the drunk man in a cart near the cobbler shop and rode him off. Okay, Castle Road is nearby. That's right. Here, these must be the stairs right there. Just chilling as usual, John. Oh, do I need to pin the... Yes, I do. Because I need to do this. Well, maybe this is not the way. Okay. Stairs over here. Those are stairs. There's cart marks. Blood. Yes. Okay. Um, not sure if I'm supposed to be tracking the cart or not. I don't see any other. I don't see any other marks. Um. Casebook and read them evidence every time. It's so annoying. Like, I found the cart. I'm obviously looking for the tracks. Why wouldn't you pin it automatically? That's where I'm going. Come through, boy. Whoa, that cart is floating. What an impressive donkey you are.
took me about half the game to catch on to the whole pin evidence after every new clue thing. And I still find it annoying, but at least now I'm remembering and not wandering around aimlessly for a few minutes while I look for the clues I know I should be looking for but cannot see because I do not have them pinned. This is a very long trail. Here be the cart. I see Angelo's hat. Is it supposed to be bloody rags and a lamp? Oh jeez, look at that. Green silk. A bit worn and faded, but yeah, this guy's, still this guy's fucking hat. dead. He's definitely dead. There's no way he get a blow like that and survive. Someone desperately tried to stop the bleeding. Yeah. I think I found the place where they took Angela. Yeah, probably. This is gonna be a battle. This is gonna be a battle. I gotta get my battle clothes on. What are my battle clothes? Um what's this? Prince of Darkness. Turn heads before cracking skulls. What is this? I don't remember getting this. Well, I'm wearing it for sure. Oh my god. A normal mask for normal people? <laughs> what? Oh, you can't wear it along with an eye patch. That would be funny if I could just blank out one of my eyes. I suppose all of this doesn't matter. Ooh, we got a new a couple of new outfits for John. Um ooh, we got a plague doctor. That's neat. You can wear the Plague Doctor for a while. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, it's a battle. Damn it. These. I'm coming. Oops. I'm coming for you. No more crime for you until next month. Oops. Good day. At least Take I get a this rest, awesome my friend. Out. Reload. Just die. No, you. Time to knock this guy out. Hands are up, he's giving up. Let's fucking beat the shit. Too simple. The snuff's ready. Give him the pepper snuff. Oh, don't cry, you'll give him the pepper snuff. I couldn't miss the party. Don't bother moving. The snuff's ready. Your participation is appreciated. I think he's going to be able to have one. Yes, he is. Is there a second guy? Oh, there he is. You can overcome the brute now. Uh, X, that's the button I'm looking for. I'm coming for you. I could not remember the button. No more crime for you until next month. Ow. Hello, I'm coming. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, don't cry, you'll live. Um, he has nothing. Ow. Oh, I'm stuck. Shit. Oh, is he armored? Oh shit, I'm out of that. No, no, I gotta do it again. That's what I get. That's what I get for showboating. I really hate these. I'm standing the wrong way. I'm coming. Damn it. Do I gotta practice or am I just mad at this? Come on, bottle, bottle. Oh, son of a bitch. 
And then I'm stun locked. So. Bottles suck. Man. Take a rest. My like, as targets, the bottles. I'm gonna hurt you. Like, I'm coming for you. I feel like I'm running on this sometimes and it still doesn't. Don't bother moving. The snuff's ready. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Time to knock this guy out. Oh, oh. Take a rest, my friend. Give him so the pepper fast. snap. After, after the first battle, I had understood the mechanics, and they have added nothing to it since then, except for the added armor, which if it doesn't really impact, like, no more. The snuff's really ready. Change. I couldn't miss the party. Battle enough to add any dynamicity Don't to it. It moving. just adds You've an lost. additional layer of frustration. This is a lot like uh, when you're a DM and you're playing D and D. If you just throw creatures at your party, the battles become purely games of attrition. Uh, the tactics kind of become set, and it's just you know taking turns rolling dice and seeing so which numbers now. happen Go to come it. up. That's why they require you know use of environmental factors or something to add some dynamicity to the battles. To prevent them from getting stale, and these are quite stale at this point. I mean, I'm basically Don't cry, stuck in an live. arena with waves of uninteresting. Give him the pepper snuff. Eternally duplicated. Time to knock this guy out. Um. This is could miss the party. They're very formidable. Don't bother so moving. Yeah, You've point. lost. <laughs> Don't cry, you'll live. It's all yours now. Go for it. And I gotta reload. <laughs> Maybe if I had taken um, no more crime for you. Name? The snuff's ready. Placido. Maybe if I had taken Placido's revolver, it would have changed things. And I would just be firing faster. That would eliminate one pain point, one a source of annoyance, but certainly not enough to really make a difference. The bandits had as much fun as they could. Okay. Dominoes, cards, money, booze, and what appears to be some kind of turkey leg just hanging out here. Okay. All right, what am I supposed to be doing? Okay, I found the thing that's there. All right, so I guess I'm going to look for the book. Knife. Oh, a finger. A primary instrument of torture. How vicious one must be to have to use it in such a way. Um, always and forever. That's sweet. An engraving inside. Together, always and forever. I'm really more interested in the sheet music that happens to be sitting here, but that's not a clue for some reason. <laughs> like, I understand it's a finger. They use the knife to cut off the finger. I get it. It's torture. The sheet music, the presence of it is uh, far, far more unusual. Severed finger. Final no one deserves concert. such cruelty. Mm. Yeah, I so don't see a lot of blood with the fingers, so. Must have been severed over there where John is because there's a pool of blood. And what have we over here? A map of Cordona and some money. Oh, a key. Keys of different shapes and sizes. What could you open with these? Doors. They were tracking down Angelo. Okay. They needed a full-on map of Cordon just so they could stick a pin in it to identify his shop. 
Not a crate full of rifles. Now that is interesting. So this is cell. Here's blood. Blood stains all over the mattress. And a busket. Oh shit. Boss trusted you, and you idiots failed him. You should have scored the book by now, or at least know where it is. It's written by FD with a red cover. He must have hid it somewhere. Find the book and burn everything else. If you fail, know that you'll burn too, Mr. Hyde. So there's our book. It's hidden somewhere. We're going to have to find it. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's not good. If they had recovered the book, then I'd be able to take it from them. But, I mean, at least now we know they don't have it. Mr. Hyde, obviously a reference to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Famous novel in the Western canon. Here we have books that are not apparently the ones that we're looking for. Quite a collection of books, but none of them with FD as the author. And here is Angelo. Wow, he... Really wants to protect that book. There is his seven star tattoo. At last. I found you, Angela. Nice design. There's the severed finger. They severed his finger while he was still alive. He's got a bad wound here, too. I mean, he's wounded in the head. But this is not that. He sustained a great many injuries. Mycroft should know about this. Yeah, no kidding. Of course. He's not going to think much of it, but I would say that Angelo here deserves some kind of recognition for apparently not succumbing to torture. Unless he did and we just don't know yet. I mean, it's possibly given him information that they conveniently write a note for us to find that says, hey, we found it. Um, that's it. I'm supposed to do the concentration thing. Okay. Let's pin that so we can do it. I'm assuming we start over here by the body. Or not. Working for Mycroft is a dangerous profession. I feel for the guy. Yeah, me too. I'm supposed to concentrate, I'm just not entirely sure where. Oh, they got themselves a nice setup in here for a gang. Yep. Um, how about through here? Nope, nothing. Okay, how about through this door? Thing, okay. Oh, back in here, of course. What did you hide, Angela? Ah, uh, I see. How he managed Seems to smuggle like the book into his book cell without them noticing. All. Do you think it has a coded message inside? Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Okay. Um, who do I need to talk to? I should return to the newspaper building. Okay, then I shall. As soon as I find the door. Los papire there. Ah, <laughs> the illustrious Mr. Holmes returns no worse for wear. And with a gripping tale to tell, no doubt. While the matter proved rather simple in the end, I'm afraid the details are not for your ears, nor your readers. How very tantalizing. 
Your brother asks that I collect your report, and a book if you obtained it. Here is my report, and Miss Sertle. He will know if you opened it. I also retrieved the book for Mycroft. Crime and punishment? Sounds appropriate. More than you may think. Uh huh. How so? Hmm. Should I tell her about the ring? Sure. There's something else. I found a ring belonging to one of Mycroft's men. Did he mention anything further? Alas, no. Well, the man was a hero. Protected the secrets of the British Empire. Here, please deliver this ring to Mycroft. I'm sure he'll know what to do. Is... I, I don't understand. Miss Sertle, I'm afraid neither do I. This is his ring. My Angelo's ring. Angelo Dondolo is your fiancé. My God. Your brother told me Angelo was sent to Roma. What happened? Where is he? Um, I really don't feel like I should lie. I mean, Mycroft will probably want me to, but I don't really give a fuck what Mycroft wants. Angelo died in the line of duty, but his bravery saved countless others. Uh, no, 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 not Angelo, not my Angelo. I, I don't, I, I don't understand. I'm sorry, Yasmin. Uh, Mycroft kept this from me. I am one of his best, and he kept it from me. He assured me Angela would be fine, but he lied. You are not the first victim of Mycroft's cold calculus, mm -hmm. and you won't be the last. Your work has value to him, and the truth threatened it. Well, by hiding the latter, he has lost the former. Thank you for your honesty, Mr. Holmes. Now, please. Yasmin, let this be a lesson to you. Don't let other people manipulate you. Honestly. Um, is that it? Oh, okay. That's it. I thought there was more. Siren song. A sailor was found drowned on the beach by the cemetery. Oh, that's the problem with people like Yasmin is they are smart and they are idealistic and they are motivated. And that is all great. Those are great qualities to have. But it means that somebody with an agenda can point them in the right direction and use them. Happens far too often. Is this the body? It is. Okay, so we will go this way. And then we will go south. Don't get me wrong. Everyone needs a cause. And it's important to do things that, in your estimation, lead to the greater good. That said, you just have to be wary in the vision that you choose to pursue. Especially if it's somebody else's idea of a better world. And here we are. And the kiss mark, it's... it's the work of a siren, I'm telling you. Should I change? I kind of like this outfit, I think I'm going to keep that. <laughs> Hello there, officer. Here to gawk at the bloater? Not at all, officer. Perhaps I can help. Help with what exactly? Solving an accident? Fellow drank himself to death. Literally. Case closed. It's not the first case, neither. A few days ago, another drunken sailor drowned himself in a fountain. Um, alright. What about the other sailor? What can you tell me about the other sailor? Nothing to tell. Some rich chap complained about a dead body in a fountain. It wasn't me who inspected the scene, though. Should have gone easy on the bottle, if you ask me. They get to shore, they start drinking like fish. Too bad booze doesn't make them grow gills, eh? There's talk on the streets that a siren could be responsible for the drownings. A siren? You mean the bird woman kind? Why, of course, we've got sirens aplenty round here. Harpies, too. Oh, please. I would like to take a look around. Go ahead. Just don't disturb the evidence, all right? I still have to write my report. Okay, I can't ask who investigated the last murder because I can feel it. Or not the last murder, the last body. Oh. 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 It's a good thing the tide hasn't washed away the tracks. I should inspect them more closely. 
Do I have to pin the? Yeah, I do. What's that? What's that? Three and a half. Okay, so uh, we'll follow the trail here in a sec. First, there's the body. His whole body is tense, stiffened by rigor mortis. So we got tattoos like a sailor. Size Worn soaked boots, size eight. Yeah. Okay. So those are his footprints, and then there's obviously much smaller feet. The uh, significance of Sailor's tattoos is his fingers are really clenched as if he's clutching to life even now. Oh, my um, however, Ooh, these that? tattoos don't seem to follow the traditional Sailor tattoo patterns. There's obviously. <laughs> nautical motifs here um, but the arrangement of tattoos is not exactly correct for example we have here it's hard to see with this angle is it meant to be a ship or a lighthouse can't tell we got the bottle of rum here on his left hand. We've got birds here, but these birds are not sparrows or swallows. Sparrows from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which would actually be swallows. The significance of birds is that they would be tattoos of migratory birds, uh, which go far off in their migration patterns, but always instinctively return home. The significance for sailors is obvious. A lady on a cask, oh. which lead tattoos like this obviously were common, but I don't recognize this specifically. Um, the finger tattoos here. We have the fishbone. We have what looks like starry sky stairs leading up. This doesn't quite make sense. Portholes of a starry sky would have been common, not on the fingers necessarily, but... Um, spider webs, however, um, they they did exist. They're more of a prison tattoo kind of a thing, as is this cross with the four dots in here. Let's have a mermaid on this side. What do we have? Crossed anchors. That is a correct motif. Anyway, I'm spending way too much time looking at tattoos. The face is frozen in a contorted smile. You died happy then. Great. A kiss on the forehead is quite intimate, but the vulgar lip rouge suggests a different type of intimacy. Interesting. Yeah, so Something like smells fishy here, and it's not brine. I mean, all dead bodies look horrific. That's kind of the nature of dead bodies, but uh, this does not look like a drowning victim. And if you've ever seen them, you know exactly what I mean. Alright, so up here... Um, here is what? Cigarettes. Red lipstick. No brand. A bright red lip rouge mark. Light tobacco with a hint of citrus. Turkish. Okay. It is possible that the killer is here in the crowd. What's that? What? Oh, what she, I can't see her lips. She's not wearing red lipstick. I keep saying she, it could be a man. I can't see anything about her. Cattle trader. Well, of those, the spice trader is most likely. It's 
Just get on with it. Right. Oh, these are a good way to take the mind off all the murders. Mm. Say so. What were they drinking? Siren, Siren song. song. Hmm. The rumours weren't so absurd after all. Okay. There's still some left. Just enough for a tipple. What do? Oh, now we can analyze that. See if he was drugged. <laughs> uh, negative four, negative one, negative two. Okay. Oops, that's the wrong. Well, maybe we can make use of it. Uh, that gives us negative one. Okay, and if we do this and um, reverse that, it gives us, all right, so we just need this and reverse that. Add all those together. Oops. Or short one. Wait, what happened? Oh. Um, yeah, we're short one. I mis miscounted. <coughs> um, so then we need We gotta back up a little bit because I miscalculated. Okay, you one, two, uh, four. Negative that there, then this, then that, then this. There we go. And then we need the three. Reverse that here. And combine. Oh no, I miscounted again. Negative. Four. Negative one, two. Uh, oh, because the other one was these two combined. That's why. Um, negative. So there's three. We need to get to two. Um, so let's increment this. Okay, then we need a... Um, reverse. That'll get us to negative one, negative two. We still need two more here. So we can do this. Decrement. Reverse. Okay, now we can combine this and this. And this and that. Negative four, negative one, negative two. Cyanide. So that was the cause of death. The sediment contained cyanide. It turns out he was poisoned. Didn't the copper say that fellow drank himself to death? He wasn't wrong. Mm -hmm. What now? I've still got my report to write to make it quick. I hate to break it to you, officer, but it wasn't an accident. Care to elaborate, smartly boots? The bottle of wine I found near the victim had been poisoned with cyanide. He was dead before he hit the water. Whoa, that's a twist. Any leads on the poisoner? Nothing to put my finger on, but I might need to inspect the other drowned sailor. Well, of course I won't stop you. It's not my case anyway. We had a complaint about a body in a fountain. Can't have bodies laying about in fountains, can we? It was somewhere in Scaladio, as far as I know. You think they're connected? That is what I intend to find out. Thank you. Okay, to the police station. Uh, 
and I forgot where it was. Did you hear Basilio Copello is in jail? A dead body was found in his showroom. Brute force, because it's the only way I know to actually understand how this works. Okay, maybe not. Yes, I'm listening to you. Is there something about me that seems hear? conspicuous? Okay. We've got to fall back, Sherlock. I think they're suspicious. Oh, they were checking you out. Did you hear in this outfit? I don't blame him. Alright. Um, no, no, yes. No, no. Uh, yeah. The curiosity has been piqued by talk that Basilio Capello, the owner of the famous Armour Capello Home Security Company, has been arrested. The situation is quite peculiar. A man named Nicola Deri has been found dead inside a safe in Basilio's store. Basilio claims innocence, but the evidence is against him. He's being held in the holding cells at the police station. In the police? Let's pretend to be cops, eh? We can just stand around and look confused. Not all that different from what you do all the time, John. You're lucky no one else can see you. A violent crimes in Scaladio. Uh, victims? A sailor was reported drowned in a public park at the intersection of Harbor Avenue and Baskerville Street in Scaladio. At the time of his death, the victim was presumably under the influence of liquor. The body had a red kiss mark on one of its cheeks. Harbor and Baskerville. Um, here be Baskerville, here be Harbor. It's right outside the police station. Okay. And I suppose while I'm in here, let's go to the holding cells. Go to the holding cells and have a little chat with Mr. Basilio. This area is restricted. Yeah, your area is restricted. Uh, came out wrong. Ignore me. Okay. I think I need to dress like a policeman. Uh, okay, then I will. Navy officer uniform. Police. Officer's cap. Um. I recall they really liked the mustache. There we go. I'm gonna leave the gang tattoo. That's how certain I am. Excuse me. Ugh, I'm authorized day. because I'm wearing the right clothes. Was he in the cell my friend was murdered in? No. Hey. Excuse me, but are you Mr. Capello? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm hoping you could spare a moment to talk. Manners. What a pleasant surprise. Most of your colleagues have lacked even the simplest of common courtesies. The reason should be apparent, Mr. Capello. I am not a policeman. I have taken an independent interest in your situation. Ah, of course. You're a journalist. Nothing so prosaic. I'm a detective of sorts with an interest in the interesting, such as your case. I'm not after your money nor a scandalous tale for the Gazette. Just the truth. Ah, how quaint. Benne. Ask your questions, Mr. Holmes. Quaint, okay. Observe. I see you have a large nose. I see you are wearing a tie. I see... Um... I see that you have a... Oh, you're married. Tight on the finger, eh? Fingers a little swollen. 
Perception. Fight. Listen to trauma. Basilio Capello is the local proprietor of the famous Armour Capello safe, locked door, and home security company in Cordona. He's currently being held in the police station holding cells of the prime suspect for Nicolo Deddy's murder. He's in his early 40s. He has a flair for the new and fashionable. He keeps his frustrations bottled up while at the police station, but could be prone to violence. He has a bruise on his right hand, which might be the result of a fight. He's attached to his family. Impulsive. Methodical. Same, same. A methodical man who puts business and principles above all else. He keeps calm and focused despite being arrested. He has a bruise on his hand, possibly had to defend himself recently. He values his family a lot. Well, that seems more accurate to me. You are surprisingly composed for a man accused of murder. Not so easily shaken, I take it. Life is full of surprises. You'd be astonished how many deals go sour due to a force majeure. One becomes skilled at adapting. I am confident this will all be set straight. Until then, I will endure. Much how you endure that injured hand. Those bruises look painful, but you seem barely aware of it. Were you attacked? Ah, no. A minor accident, nothing more. My heady days as a man out to prove his valor are far behind me. I now know that to succeed in life, one must stay calm and plan ahead. The world will turn your way eventually. And if it does not, then one must persuade it so. And how do you persuade the world? Please, tell me how you ended up in this situation. Well, this morning some clients arrived to finalize their purchase of a Copello Modular safe. But when we opened the door, out tumbled a dead man. And Surprise. I take it this wasn't normal? No, I normally keep my corpses in the wardrobe. Please, young man, spare me your wit. The rest of the day was a blur. I recognized the victim, and it seems so did the police. That was enough to make me the main suspect. Who sent for the authorities? No one. As it happens, we had a break-in last night. Nothing was stolen, but for insurance purposes, the report had to be made. So... Police officers just happened to be on the premises when we discovered the body in the safe. Really? Just happened to be? Okay. Well, you said you recognized the victim, so how did you know You him? say you became the suspect when the police identified the victim. Is there history between you? Surely you jest. That man and I have never met, and never would, unless he became the first detty in history to use our products. Some sort of family feud? I'm afraid I'm not familiar. Ah, you must be new to Godona. It's an old tale. Back in Italy, generations ago, the Dettis tried to ruin our family business. They nearly succeeded. The Capellos rightfully struck back, but there has been bad blood ever since. And does that blood flow in you too? I told you, sir, it's an old story. Or it was. I fear this horrible event portends worse to come. My wife may be in danger as we speak. Then why are you so calm? Okay, um, so there was a burglary. Nothing was stolen, so... I'd like to inquire the about the burglary. I'm not sure I see the connection. But you if you wish to know more, talk to Billy Lloyd, the night watchman. He scared off the thief. Was it also Billy that discovered the burglar? No, my wife did. She had stayed late yesterday. Poor Augusta. At least she's safer with the police than at home alone. Hmm... You seem painfully naive for someone who's supposed to be fairly worldly. All right, so who are you showing the safe off to? You mentioned you were showing your wares to some prospective buyers when the safe was opened. Who were they? Clarks from the bank. They inspected the safe from top to bottom yesterday. I assumed the sale was just a formality at that point. And the safe was closed? It's usually open, but it locks automatically when the door swings closed. That's another marvelous Copello invention. A coffin Sounds that like locks a death itself. Trap. Marvelous indeed. Apparently unfamiliar with the idea of a fail-safe versus fail-secure. When did you meet the clients? Help me grasp your movements yesterday. What time did you meet the customers from the bank, and did you have any other appointments? Yesterday, uh, the bank clerks arrived at 10 a.m., uh, Afterwards, I was alone in the office until my wife Augusta came in at 3 p.m. I left for home at 6.30 p.m. And what about this morning? 
Our meeting for the demonstration was set for 9 a.m. I arrived about half an hour prior in order to prepare. I have one final inquiry. The preparation Do you didn't recall the time at which the safe, safe door was closed? To test it. Young man, your I may arrived. just as well ask you when you closed your cigar case. I have opened our safes a dozen times a day for a dozen years. I do not recall. Okay. Well, Mr. Capello, I think that's all I need from you at present. Where can I find your office? Here, take my card. Billy should be on site to assist with the investigation. And please, sir, would you check on my wife before you... Thank you. I will endeavor Oops. to speak with her before Excellent. I leave the station. The Please, treat her gently. Women lack our resilience when it comes to ordeals like this. I shall eagerly await your return. After all, there is little else I can do. My gosh, I am calling. Disappointing. We were putting on a show and you call it off halfway through. What was I saying? Oh, I should have lied. Okay, whatever. Uh, listen, dude, I'm going to call this right now. Um, your wife is involved in this. She definitely is trying to set you up. Okay? Just mentally prepare yourself for when that definitely happens in a couple minutes. So you wanted me to lie, is that right? Um... Yeah, why would I do that, John? Doesn't make any fucking sense. Okay. Uh, but we were on this. Uh, we are going there. John, my imaginary friend. Mrs. Capello, please wait in the office. The inspector will be here soon. My imaginary friend John told me to impersonate a police officer. Is this her? You must be the inspector. Would you be Augusta Capello? Must I really repeat myself to every baby-faced man in uniform that strides in? Wow. Oh, I'm not the inspector, but I am investigating your husband's case as an independent observer. Then why are you here? Get out. Mrs. Capello, I mean you no harm. My name is Sherlock people. Holmes, and Can I'm on your husband's this? case independently. Please, Mr. Holmes. I cannot bear to relive it again just for some stranger's pleasure. I wish to be left alone. You want your husband to be freed? Then play along. Ah. She's an opiate addict, and she's Irish. about your marriage lately, eh? Augusta Capello is the wife of the accused Basilio Capello. She's in her late 20s and while previously involved in music, currently works with her husband. Has been fidgeting with her wedding ring due to stress. Has recently used laudanum, but doesn't seem accustomed to the drug. Shocked. Um, has recently used laudanum and may be accustomed to the drug. Well... Laudanum is an opiate derivative. If she were an addict, we would see a bit more here than what I can tell from just the look on her face. Um, like, for example, she doesn't seem to have any signs of serious opiate addiction. You know, uh, the um, dry skin or, you know, the general signs of lack of caring for herself because she spent so much time high or minor injuries and such from falling over when she's on the nod or any of that kind of stuff so um but at the same time she i mean maybe she's being rude because she's coming down it's possible um not really sure um, I don't think that she's accustomed to the drug. I think that we would see signs of her being an addict and we don't, we didn't get any of that. We just got, you know, glassy eyes. We don't see, see any signs that she's a habitual user. So I guess in the absence of evidence that she is a habitual user, we're going to have to assume that she just took something to calm her nerves. 
I mean, after all, this is the 19th century. This is a patent medicine era. You know, she could have gone to any drugstore and bought laudanum, so... It's not like she needed Whilst that. I prefer German composers, the harp solo from Lucia di Lammermoor stands out as one of Donizetti's finest contributions to the form. I'm sure Basilio thought the same. He... he did. How? Did he tell you how we met? Oh, there was no need. It is trivial to observe how much you value your memories of playing harp in the orchestra, and even an amateur Italian harpist would be familiar with Donizetti's finest work. Yes. Music is a balm in these uncertain times. It is nice to meet another who appreciates it. Much as I appreciate the truth. Please, Mrs. Capello, let me help you and your husband. I am not unappreciative, sir. But I'm afraid I presently lack the strength. Right. Basilio tells me you were present during the burglary yesterday. What can you tell me about it? Oh, it gave me such a fright. I fainted, fell to the floor. I wish I could help you, but uh, I'm just utterly useless. Does this act Please. work with your husband? I assume I want does. to rest before the inspector arrives. <laughs> You're just so helpless. So helpless. Were you familiar with the deceased man found in the safe? No. I did not know him, nor can I conceive of how the poor soul ended up there. Well, your husband designs safes that lock when they're closed, so it's kind of more a matter of timing than anything else. You've had quite the day, Mrs. Capello. I shall leave you be. If I have further questions, I may visit again later. Oh, Sherry, disappointing. We were putting on a show and you call it off halfway through. There you are. Hey, John. Shut up. Right. Back to Siren Song. That's what's pinned. Yeah. Harbor and Basket. Which was right, right outside the police station. Somewhere near here. Did I pin it? Yes, I did. I don't see a fountain here. Harbor and Baskerville. Harbor, Baskerville. This is the place. Is it in this park? Up here. Yes. Oh, look, they drained the fountain and removed the body. I'm too late. No matter, yeah, we'll work with what we have. Days ago. I'm supposed to just leave the ship? Like, body rotting in the fountain? Alright, three, two, four, where's one? One, the fountain itself. Alright, we have a newspaper, we have a bit of cloth, we have a sailor's hat, and we have the fountain. So, let's begin at the beginning with number one. Uh, broken bottle. Drowning in a two feet deep fountain. I've seen some things, but this really takes the biscuit. What the fuck kind of expression is that? Two. A cotton shawl. Could it be our sirens? Is this the police report? Officer Ackley, it has come to my attention that you habitually forget to collect critical evidence from crime scenes. Such absent minded as. The irony of leaving this letter here at the crime scene. <laughs> Such absent-mindedness uh, absent -mindedness is unacceptable for a police officer. Wouldn't be surprised if you forget this note somewhere, too. This is your last warning. Chief Constable Donovan. Hmm. Okay. News paper. Chronicle. Last week's newspaper, the front page reads, Sky is the limit, Governor funds Arsenal's second airship. Oh. A broken bottle with no label. And cigarettes with the red lipstick. Hmm, a bright red lip rouge mark. Light tobacco with a hint of citrus. Ah. 
a connection. And the hat and bottle with more cigarettes. The victim won't be needing his cap anymore. I might as well take it. And oh, siren song again. This wine again. Don't sailors prefer spirits? Yes, but the killer trained to the last drop. So the killer identifies oh, the victim. The litter bin is right there. Oh, and a litter bug to boot. Goodness, the depravity of some people. Okay. Here is a beach crime scene, cotton shawl, and the warning for Officer Ackley. Okay. Um. There must be more. You know, I'm to head to the morgue to examine the body. Um, I don't see any other evidence. Let's see if we can piece things together here. Here was the cigarette with the red rouge mark and a paper from last week. So they were set to meet in this park. Killer sat here for a short time and smoked a cigarette, maybe had a little drink, read the paper, waited for the sailor to arrive. Who did. Hmm. But there's a lot more cigarettes there. So they must have been here waiting for a while. They were to bring a bottle of Siren Song, and that's how the killer was able to identify them. They must be meeting somewhere and exchanging information. Oh, we have uh, also... A worn leather tobacco pouch, salt-stained from a long time at sea. Uh. Oh. Now we can do the reconstruction. Okay. So I believe that the killer came and sat here. It seems like they were waiting. Sat here reading the paper and smoke. Hmm. I don't think that she just walked by and got his attention. And his rolling cigarettes. Why did he smoke so many of them? I'm gonna go with this. Drinking, laughing. No, I don't think she was there minding her own business. I don't think she drank the wine, although we don't know if this bottle was poisoned. This must be this. She walks away. Hmm. Yes. Perhaps. Well, those are my two choices. We don't actually have any evidence that she murdered anyone except for the poison. We don't know how our killer is connected to the wine yet. But this seems most plausible from what I can see. Although he was here for a long time with these cigarette butts. Although, I guess maybe they're not his. Somebody was sitting there for a while. Let's see how close we are. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Something then. Um, let's go over what we know, I guess. Um. <laughs> let's see. Um. It just says it's the same one that contained the poison. It doesn't say that this one was poisoned. So, oh, the cotton shawl that I don't know if I accounted for in my thing here. No, she, she she's not wearing it here. Mm. 
In one, she's reading the paper, and the other one, she's smoking a cigarette. Well, we definitely know she smoked the cigarette. It's got the lipstick on it. Am I to believe that the paper is just incidental? It was left here sometime before all that? She's here smoking a cigarette. God, this is there. I'm missing so much information. How does the bottle fit in? She must have the bottle. She must bring it. It's her murder weapon, so she must bring it. So she's here smoking a cigarette, enjoying a bottle of something safe to drink. She sees the sailor and offers him some... Okay, that's the best I can do with the information I have. This sailor is another victim right, of the good. same woman. She poisoned him and pushed him into the fountain to make it look like an accident. Sherlock, the spot where he fell. I, I saw something. Maybe you should take a look. A fork? Blimey, the great detective is baffled by a piece of cutlery. Shut up, John. It's so fucking easy, you do it. A water-soaked matchbox from The Drinking Dutchman. Must be a local pub. I think I got that... Um, location last time randomly when I happened to come in. Venetian copper soldi. Authentic, but worthless. Okay. Killer manipulates her victims into drinking cyanide poisoned wine. After the poison takes effect, she pushes them into the water to make it appear they have drowned. Okay, this one I... yes, I do know this one. It was... I, I came across it uh, after the... during the last uh, blah blah blah, the thing, the this place here. In terms of modus operandi, by the way, female so serial killers are far more likely to use poison vampires. Um, However, usually females not in the move shit yet. Are comfort killers. Um, gonna need to change, I suppose. Do I have a tailor cap? Here we go. <laughs> All right, let's talk about why so many sailors are dying. Who we talk about? Probably the barman. He's the one who's going to have the most connection between them. What can I get you, mate? Nah, I'm good. Don't want to end up like that guy who drowned in the fountain after having one too many. Aye, I know the fella. Shame, damn shame. But let me tell you, it wasn't the drink that got him. It was a curse. Curse. Okay. Was it the siren? I guess. It had something to do with the siren. No way, mate. That's just a daft superstition. I'm talking about a real curse here. He was from HMS Aculus. Some British schooner, nothing special. Except one of them Jack Tars shot an albatross. Everyone knows it's bad luck. Everyone. Mm. The dimwit brought the curse upon his whole crew. Three are dead already. Right. Not like the Siren Curse, the real curse. But you did say three. Maybe Wait, two. I've heard of only two such accidents. Are you saying that another man drowned? Drowned or not, they've all kicked the bucket. Just this morning, another member of the crew was found dead. It's a curse, I'm telling you. Yeah, we're obliged to find out if... It must indeed be the curse, but how do you know all that? Why, he told me the whole story himself. The victim told you? His crewmate, the one who killed an albatross, Harry Thorne. He's renting a room upstairs. Every day, he gets completely rat assed raving on and on about the bird around his neck. He's sleeping it off right now. But when the blight wakes up, it'll be the same thing all over again. Do you have a free room? Certainly do. Dirt cheap. Here's the key. Go pick anyone you like. 
Hmm? New location giant sparrow club. Where, where is that from? Smells of stale cigarettes and damp bed sheets. Not exactly the best place to stay in town. Oh well, could be worse, Sherlock. No. Okay. Oh, get in there. Oh, the smell alone makes me feel groggy. Him up. Let's take a peek. The photo of the cursed crew. Here's Thorn, and right next to him, our first drowning victim. Crew of HMS Achilles, Cordona, 1879. Red lipstick, eh? The same as we saw earlier. She's pretty free with her kisses. Perhaps too much for her own good. Wow. Judgy. My dear Harry, you probably don't remember me, but I remember you. How could I ever forget our shared night of passion? Now that you've returned to Cordono, why don't you visit me at the Garden of Delights? You won't regret it, I promise. And don't you worry about the money. You are my very special client. Elisa. <laughs> now we walk into a trap. Guns blazing. The game is afoot, Sherry boy. Well said. Oof, I think I'll really borrow that line from you, old chum. Oof, he's really gone on a binge. I kind of feel like I don't need to wake him up. I kind of feel like I know where to find Elisa. I'm pretty sure Elisa's the one responsible, but... He's out cold. No use trying to wake him. Okay, well, I wasn't going to bother him. Okay. <clears throat> the Garden of Delights. Peek here. All right. Uh, the Garden of Delights. What was uh, was um, it was somewhere. There it is. Um, fast travel and then head east. Red light district. Okay. Hello. Um, pin. All right, it's not an interrogation one. It's wait, what? Oh, wrong case. Uh, found in the alley. Oh, behind the giant sparrow. Okay, so this is this is an optional task for John. Uh, that's why the giant sparrow club came up. Um, yeah. No, I'm pretty much already wearing that. Um, okay, yeah. Rather than going right for her, I guess we'll do the thing with for John here, the giant sparrow club, which was. Here. Examine the other crime scene. Might as well. It's for John after all. Okay. Still there. Still upset. Well, if it ain't Mr. Smarty Boots, guess what? You were about the poisoning, but this time I'm ahead of the game. We've got another homicide on our hands. Same method, same everything. See for yourself. Mind if I do? Um, I wouldn't say this is exactly the same MO. There's no water anywhere to be seen. Well, not MO. That would be the signature. Um, but still, that evolves over time with the vendors, but 
for it to just suddenly change completely like this is unusual. Fallon hit his head on a brick. Sharp, bloody rock stuck deep in the mud. The officer must have rolled the body over. He suffered a head wound. There's caked blood in his hair underneath all the mud. This is not the same crime. This is not the same killer. An empty bottle of rum. There'd be no sirens. Looks like he slipped. This was clearly an accident. Hey, you're wrong about this. What did I tell you? We've a killer on the loose. I knew it. That may be true, but this here is very clearly an accident. The victim slipped and hit his head on a rock. I would have thought it obvious. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I thought I had all this sewn up. But you just had to come along and make me look like an idiot. I hope you're happy now, genius. Just move along. So it was a curse after all. The curse of clumsiness. I hope it's not contagious. Okay. Um, where was it? This? Yes. Well, that was a huge waste of time. Um, okay, here, pin that, and now we'll go interrogate. Sorry, you're not my type. Okay. But the whole point of being a prostitute is... May I ask matter, you something? But, okay. Yes. Word about this, Ansem. Let me tell you. The southernmost part of Green Street in Silverton is what locals call the Garden of Delights. It's notorious for its prostitutes under the wing of Madame Pauline. That's not helpful at all. Um, I'm looking for someone specifically. Um, and... May I ask for your assistance? Sorry. I know nothing about it. But I can please you in another way. Um... Well, John's standing here, so... Is this... Hmm, southernmost part of Green Street? Yeah, this. Um... Can I ask you a question? Oh, sorry. I know nothing about it. But I can please you in another way. Mm -hmm. The dialogue takes way too long. Um, alright, I'm not sure where to go, because yes, this is the Garden of Delights. I'm looking for someone specifically, but I can't actually... Maybe if I pin the right thing? It's not an interrogation. There's, there's a... Can I ask you a question? Oh, sorry. I know nothing about it. But I can please you in another way. You can't go in anywhere. It's a location. You can see the location icon here. I'm in disguise. Lush beard, sailor's uniform. So I have all that. Um, can I talk to this guy, maybe? Help me, please. I'd help you if I could, but I know nothing. Okay, where is Elisa? What in the hell? I mean, this is the place. I'm looking for someone in particular. Is it you? Come on over, oh. lovey. Don't be shy. I can see you're up for some fun. Madame Pauline will see you right. Girls? Boys, a bit of both. Whatever tickles your pickle, darling. <laughs> All right. Um. I'm looking for the girl who wrote this letter. Perhaps you know who she might be? Let me see. No, I don't know, Lovey. I have a Lizzie here, but I doubt she can even spell her own name. And what's all this nonsense about a special client? This is a business we're running here, not a charity. Okay. 
You know this guy? What's that got to do with me? No, okay. Um... I'm looking for a specific girl. This is her shawl. Do you have any idea where she might be? Ah, I know who you mean. It's the goody two shoes down the street. She's not one of mine, though. She's not even a working girl, if I say so myself. Trust me, lovey. We'll give you a much better time. I don't doubt it, ma'am, but I have to see her first. Thanks for your help. Okay. Oh, she's the other way. The way I came. Yeah, I think we should interrogate some of them. Well, hell, all of them. You are fucking intangible. You are a figment of my imagination. What, John, would you do with any of these women if they gave you the time of day? You disgust me. Never. Or is better. Sorry, you're not my type. I think it's you. I think you're the killer. Um Pin Talk. Sorry, you're not my type. I mean, I'm not dressed appropriately. I am wearing the beard. I am wearing the hat. Maybe it's the uniform. I mean, technically, this is a different uniform. Um, this is almost certainly her. Sorry, you're not my type. Okay, let's try. Um, and that pretty much confirms that it's her because the only place I can't change clothes is in front of people like that. Um, this... Hello. Harry, it's you. I knew you'd come. It's been so long, but you haven't changed a bit. I don't suppose you remember me, do you? You must be Eloisa, yes? I got your letter. Wonderful. No point beating around the bush, then. I've missed you, love. I wonder if you still have your prowess. Why don't we go to my place for some wine and something extra? Mm, I guess... How could I refuse such an offer from a pretty girl like you? Let's go right now. Wonderful. Follow me. It's not far from here. Well, here we are. Make yourself comfortable, love. There's wine on the table. You should have some. Loosen you up. Bring out your naughty side. What will you drink with me? Uh, absolutely. I'll join you in a minute. I just need to powder my nose. All right, then. I'll be waiting for you, pet. Little does she know, her pet. all of my sides Seriously. are naughty sides. Boy, you are truly hopeless, Sherlock. Okay. This is a very big apartment for the 19th century, um, unless they're fabulously wealthy, which she, she may be. Oh, I can just leave? I can just, okay. Well, I could just up and leave. Um, I don't want to drink out of that bottle because I know it's poisoned, so... Mm -hmm. Hurry up, she'll be out any second. HMS Achilles, Friday, 5 p.m. She prepared for their arrival. So she has an agenda, a grudge. The beloved child of a rich family. Uh, that explains the apartment. Um, she has a grudge for some reason against this particular crew. 
My dear Eliza, with this I am sending you the money that I promised in my last lender letter. Your father may still blame you, but I don't, darling. I know that none of it was your fault. He won't listen to me, but I am sure he misses you too. I beg you, return home. Until then, you are in my thoughts and prayers. Rachel Esposito. Something happened to her related to sailors, and I don't like where this is going. What does she keep hidden? These magic mirrors that show the back of you instead of the front. Come on, hurry up! Shut up. Ah, she's smoking citrus-flavored cigarettes that dots connect. This lip rouge looks good on her. Just saying. You're awful fucking horny for a figment of my imagination, you know. Cyanide. White powder with a bitter almond-like odor. These are no smelling salts. It's cyanide. Another one is dead. Today, she's literally journaling her crimes. Today, as I watched the ripples around him, I should have felt relief. Yet I felt nothing. Nothing but my own pain. If only memories could fade away like those ripples. I wish I could forget that dirty alley, that fear and helplessness, that feeling of their hands all over my body. I can't wash it away, not even by killing them. There is only one left. It's too late to stop. Oh, here it's she comes. Exactly be as I feared. <clears throat> Sorry for making you wait, sweetie. I hope the wine has kept you good company. Oh yes, I needed to wet my whistle real bad. But the bottle is full. You didn't even take a sip. Come on, drink it. I insist. I have to decline. I believe the contents may be detrimental to my health. Wait, wh wait what's happening? It's time I drop my act. This beard is false. I'm not Harry Thorne. Oh, I see. You're from the police then, yes? Here to question me? There's no need. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I know that you killed Thorne's crewmates, and I know why. Well, Mr. Holmes, you can save your breath. I won't deny a thing. But please, stop tormenting me with this farce. Do what you must. Hmm. Tricky. Tricky, tricky. Um... So from <sighs> from It's okay. This is a tough call. From an intellectual perspective, vigilante justice is wrong. It's not what a good functioning society should aspire to. It's not what healthy, well-adjusted people should aspire to. Ideally, we would have a society that is just and where people who have been victimized, even in like as badly as her, um, would not have to take matters into their own hands, but we don't live in that kind of society, and apparently neither in this fictional universe uh, do we either. But I also didn't see any evidence that she made any attempts to actually turn them in and have them face justice, but it also seems like there was some amount of scandal within her own family, and, you know, they sort of disowned her. Um... Blaming her for what happened to her. Um, not really sure what to do. Because, I mean, you know, that's, that's ideally what we would do. You know, vigilante justice is always wrong. I understand that intellectually. On the other side, I, I do have my own monkey brain that... Uh, has a interior desire for wrongs to be righted in one way or another, even if it means a second wrong. Then again, hmm. <laughs> I mean, this is slightly different from the last 
moral choice we had to made with, make with the corrupt envoy and the woman who was brutalized. In this case, we have a second one here. But in that case, Nyla did not seek justice. But justice had to be done. In this case, she seeks justice. It's just her own brand. And in this case, these people are not in positions of power. They're sailors. Which means that they're unlikely to pull strings to try and slip the grasp of justice. I don't feel like... I mean, it's not like she's killing for pleasure. She's not, I mean, she is a serial killer by the definition provided by modern day criminologists, but she's not a thrill seeker or comfort killer. She's trying to restore some semblance of agency. She's found that it's not effective. It's not bringing her peace. Would it be just for her to pay for these crimes Not any more just, I suppose, than allowing those who victimized her to not face justice for their crimes. All right, I'm going to have to say I'm going to have to turn her in simply because what they did was wrong. They harmed her. They took away her ability for self-determination, her sense of agency. They took away her power. But she has done the exact same thing back to them. And as much as I understand that, it's not what we should aspire to. We should aspire to greater things, to better things. And I understand that she probably had little course for redress in the society. But two wrongs don't make a right. And the system will never be corrected if we continue to take matters into their own hands and not advocate for the better system. I have to be consistent in my thought process. And since this is a pretty much the same line of reasoning as I used in the last case, I have to be consistent. And I, I do believe that as much as I understand emotionally, and I would like to see her go and to see those who harmed her punished, I also understand that we can't just have people going around hurting other people because they feel wronged, because then where does it stop, right? It's not for her to pass judgment on life or death. Um, I don't. I don't believe even that it's the place of society to pass life or death judgment on people. So I have to be consistent with my own my own ethical uh, framework, and we have to turn her in. I'm afraid I must turn you into the police, miss. I'm not going to stop her. The police, you say. The police, who didn't lift a finger to bring my abusers to justice. Did you How are they them? any better than those animals? No, I won't give you the satisfaction. We're not going to stop her. We, so we're watching her kill herself. Swift move, Sherlock. Thank God you've realized those reflexes. Well... I guess now everybody's dead, so live by the sword, die by the sword. Is that it? Um, yep, that's it. Okay, what a downer. Well, I'm definitely done here for today. I'm going to end on that note. Um, so I guess next time we'll do the Iron Coffin and perhaps get to the Rugged Informant. Or I don't know. I, I do want to speed through this. There's so many more games to play in the series. And um, I'm not looking to 100% this thing. It just I just want to see the content. So, ooh, I have plenty of money now. Actually, maybe the note that I should end on is gathering some furniture. And we also have, what is this? We have a Cordona Chronicle... Thing here. 
I don't know what that is. Uh, I'll save it for next time. I'll save it for next time. Next time we'll buy some furniture and we'll do some more side quests. So, see you then. Take care. Have a nice day. And goodbye.